the after lunch, and then being that we lost an hour, um, I'm sure many of you are struggling with the whole waking up in the dark thing, and then on top of that this morning it was raining, and it was just really painful. I was, I was really surprised to see many people here as we have today, being and dealing with all the weather and that sort of thing. So I'm, I am Maurice Furrow. I work here at the School of Government with Shannon Tuzzle. Hopefully most of you know who I am. Yes. And, and I have a guest presenter with me today. His name is Alex. And uh, we're going to bottle his energy so that we can get through this presentation this afternoon so we can be as energetic as he is. Um, so I'm really excited to be uh, presenting at the regional meetings. I think it's a really wonderful idea that we are getting together regionally uh, to discuss issues that could be very impactful for our organizations. And one such uh, phenomenon that's happening right now within our organization is, is this whole concept of BYOD. How many of you have are ready to embrace BYOD? <laughs> yes. It's coming, right? It's coming. It's already here. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about BYOD, and I hope this will be a very interactive session. Um, if, if some of you have already gone down this road, which it sounds like you know, either it's coming or you, you're getting run over or you're trying to get out in front of it, um, let's have some really good conversations, some, some case studies if someone to have already um, implemented a BYOD strategy. So real quick, we're going to try to define what BYOD really means. Um, it's employees bringing their devices, whether it be a smartphone or whatever it is, and using corporate resources. It doesn't sound like a really big deal. How many of you have been bringing your own pens and pencils to work for a long time? <laughs> your own stapler and that sort of thing, right? So now all of a sudden we put a technology to it and you know it, it, it amplifies everything, right? So because of the technology today, it intrudes in our network and it opens up, us up for all kinds of security breaches. How many know the pen and pencil also could open you up for security? So we're really just trying to put some perspective around BYOD. So what is the hype? The hype is that is now we have this evolution in mobility. You know, smartphones are just as powerful as computers are these days. We have the Best Buy effect, right? Consumerization of IT. Anybody can go buy these different devices. They can get them cheaper. They're faster than our own corporate network devices are. It, it really puts us in, in a really interesting place. And the Geek Squad has is, is just about replaced all of our IT departments within local government and in the LEA, right? Because we can call the Geek Squad and they will give us the answer that we're looking for, right? Um, the other thing is that it's generational. It's very interesting to, to watch. Um, I've been in, uh, going out to schools for a while and how these kids are, you know, we're we would think a phone is unacceptable to work on. I've, I've watched kids do homework on the iTouch, the little small screen. And you know, I'm looking like, oh, I need my glasses to look at it. And, and they're still interacting and working with it. So it's generational. They, they're going to want to bring these devices in. They don't care about having a big screen. You know, they just want to have their device that allows them to still be cool and still look good and that sort of thing. The other thing that we are starting to see with this or that is being reported is the ease of use. They're used to the technology. Real quick example, um, this Christmas, I got my mom an iPad. I got her, push, well, she got her own computer. I became tech support for the computer. And it looked like, um, and many of you can relate to this, and it looked like every month I was getting a call, I can't do this, you know, I'm trying to do this. You know, so I say, well, let's try the iPad. Well, I haven't got one call about the iPad. Other than this is great. You know, she's able to get online. She's able to download pictures. She even ventured out on Facebook now. I said, well, sounds like to me you got things going on. So the ease of use by which these devices are coming with now lend themselves to wanting to bring them into our workplace and use them. Now, we give them, now think about this. Go to Best Buy and buy the iPad or whatever tablet, whatever device it is. They feel comfortable using it. Then we, they come into our environment and we give them an image 
desktop where they can't do anything. <laughs> so, so, so you see where we're going to go with this presentation is, is really, what, what is BYOD really going to the IT department? What kind of light is it casting on the IT department? It's, it's almost like we're antiquated, right? Very interesting. I was reading this quote from uh, Mark Prinsky, and it was uh, he was he was talking to a kid. He said, "When I was your age, we didn't have smartphones and these sort of things to keep us um, occupied." And the kid asked him, "Well, how did you get to the internet?" <laughs> See, so, so so they're growing up with this stuff. They're, they're they're growing up with this stuff, and they expect certain things when they come into the workplace. And IT has generally always been a certain way. And, and we, we evolved into that way, but we, we, we're still traditional in the fact that we have PCs, we have systems, we try to control the environment, and we parse out resources as we need to. This BYOD kind of changes the game a little bit, because now we're not really securing the device, but we're really trying to, in other words, give them this app-like environment means we kind of give up some control, which is a little, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into it. So how do we get started with this, this uh, BYOD thing? The first thing, I don't care if you're, if you're going into BYOD or not, you must have a policy. You have got to have a policy. Whether you're doing BYOD or not, so if you're not doing BYOD, BYOD is happening to you. You need to have some safeguards in place to ensure that um, you're actually protecting the, the corporate network if you're not doing BYOD. And if you are doing BYOD, you definitely need to have a policy before you start. Um, some of the things that you need to look for or that you would like to have in the policy, um, are you going to support all the devices that come along with BYOD? Some people are going to bring iPhones, some are going to bring iPads, <coughs> some are going to bring the Google. Um, systems. Um, so what, what are we going to allow? What are we going to support? Are we going to give stipends? How are we going to control access to the network? All these different things um, will be, should be spelled out in your policy. The other thing that is, is very important when you look at BYOD is making sure that you do a very good inventory of what you have currently. And I, and I do mean that from a physical and also from a human resource perspective. So will your network be allowed or will it be able to support multiple devices on the network? So if I come into your network and I'm bringing BYOD, <coughs> I'm probably coming with at least three devices that are going to connect wirelessly. My phone, an iPad, and my laptop. And God forbid if I get an iWatch, So if I bring a little MP3 player that connects to the network, like the iTouch, that's five devices already on one human being that is taking up five IP addresses on your network. So do you have the infrastructure to support that? Well, uh, last week we were with the K-12 group, and um, they just started a BYOD um, launch in their division. And they did it at the high school. And they had it accounted for 1,100 devices on their network. The first day that they allowed students to bring stuff in, they had 2,500 different devices pop up on their network, and it almost brought the network to a complete stop. Because the kids were bringing in all these other devices that they had. Right? And so you think about now the technology that we have, they all have some sort of connection to the, to the internet. Printers have a connection to the internet. The TVs have a connection to the internet. All these things now have some sort of wireless communication. So making sure that you're, you plan appropriately for the infrastructure piece of that. Okay? The other thing I got on here is personnel decisions and applications. Um, depending on what you decide to uh, have access to from your policy, will your applications run on these personnel devices? 
work still going to be, be accomplished. And then personnel decisions uh, basically go back to the stipends. Are we going to do stipends or not? Those, those kinds of things are going to be determined. The next thing you're looking at is uh, trying to determine what type of mobile uh, device management strategy you plan to have. I think we have in a session at the spring conference um, directly related to that, but really outlining what type of mobile device strategy you're going to have. So in other words, if I bring in my personal own device and I lose it, we don't do that though, right? But in just in case, are we going to make it a break? Those are, those are decisions that we have to talk about. And then you probably get some pushback from the employee, why well, I got all my fish and money. What you mean you make it a break? So having, having those conversations up front. Um, the network configuration we talked a little bit about. Uh, training for the users, and this goes into um, creating this whole culture of security, making sure that your users are aware of that because even though there's their own personal own device, they're still connecting to corporate information is very important and they need to respond accordingly. So you just can't let your personal own device go with your son or granddaughter or daughter away with corporate information on it because that, you know, it's a security breach on all kinds of levels. Any other things that you guys can think of as far as getting started with BYOD, some that have already started in BYOD? So, this is where I really want to focus at, is really, can the IT department, as we are saying today, handle BYOD? Can your IT department handle BYOD as it is currently constituted? Yeah. Huh? It depends. It depends. Okay, what, what would it depend on, just, just out of? Like you're saying, depends on. So, if this is you allow at all, everyone policy, or do yes. they allow you to this up into, I'm calling it four frames, um, as to how IT should, should plan to try to handle something like a BYOD implementation. The first frame is structural, and I'll get into more specifics with these. Human resource, uh, political, and culture. And the culture is, is also symbolic of, of a lot of different things, okay? So structurally, BYOD assumes that IT is going to assume a new role within the organization. Okay? It assumes that IT is going to have a role where we're going to empower our users. I'm looking for some argument now. Yeah. <laughs>
IT is going to assume a new role. See, in, in, in tra traditionally, we've been able to create the environment, create the images, create all of these things, and then hand it to them. Now they're bringing in other devices, which we may not be the expert in, to be quite honest with you. I mean, if someone brings in an iPad, they're using a very specific app that you've never heard of, then you're not the expert anymore on that particular issue. And if you don't help them, then IT becomes now this, well, they just want me to do it because they want me to have my device. They want me to use this particular thing on and on and on and on. And then that chatter gets out there, and the perception of IT takes a hit. Even if it's spelled out of policy. Even <laughs> if it's spelled out of policy. I agree. We use bar here, though. Police officers bring it to your home. They don't understand. It's like, well, if it says that you got to watch my house, well, I don't want to take it. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting that you brought up that, because I think um, IT goes from this, dip, this, this role of, um, I would say, we're not, we're not big team. Uh, but we, we, we have kind of set the environment to where we're willing to negotiate and barter and broker. So I think it, it, it changes a little bit. And structurally, you know, it, the way I look at structure is how we communicate throughout the organization. Structurally, it, it, it really challenges us to now really make sure that we're having these conversations with our business units about what devices are you bringing in and why are we bringing them in. Is there a business case for it? And if so, then we need to make sure that we are aligned for that. This use of empowerment versus command and control. Um, if I was still working in IT, this would probably freak me out the, the most because, you know, in our command and control environment where we can control the image, to wipe it whenever we get ready, or whatever the case is. And now we're saying we're going to turn that control over to the users where they can like download all this stuff on their machine and affect our network. It's a little uncomfortable. So structurally, how do we you know, put things in place to help us with that? And then that kind of blends into the human resource piece of this. Do we have the right types of skill sets in our department? We have the right people on the bus, basically, to handle um, these newer technologies that are coming in. It was very interesting. So the, the school di district that worked with this BYOD um, scenario, he said that their best tech support were the high school students at the school where all these devices came from. He said his staff just couldn't couldn't get get in line with. So do we have the right people to enable us to effectively do something like BYOD? Uh, and I use this, uh, this, this term up here, this uh, technologist versus technical. It's very important, it's a very important, the technologist is going to be very important within your department because the technologist kind of understands all these technologies and some sort of way understands how they all work together. A technical person, you know, really gives you, you have, to, you have to have them. I'm not suggesting that you need to replace the technical with the technologist. I'm suggesting that you need both of these folks in your departments. Because without one or the other, you're going to be up a creek. So in the school system, they had a lot of technical folks. They didn't have enough technologists. And so <coughs> finding that right balance is going to be essential within the organization. How many of you are starting to see a shift to technologists within your departments? Or are you just haven't gone there yet? So a technologist is a person that understands the technology and can apply it. Okay? A technical person is more or less the person that behind the scenes, the ones and zeros, but may not necessarily know how to apply the technology. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm creating a, a um, sounds like a between something between a developer yes. and a support person. A little bit more than a support a person, but, but, but yes, but yes.
technologist is not necessarily going to be very technical. And a technical person is not necessarily going to be a technologist, even though they're technical. up that control, then you need to find another way to um, to grant them access. I agree. In, an internal cloud, whatever you want to call it. Yes. But you've got to deliver them access to the data that they and the applications that they need. But you're, you're not going to stop this. Yes. So I would disagree with that. But well, I, I would have to
think of the, the key to, to, to any of this is, and I agree, BYP is coming, Highland Bass, who knows. But if you are not having those discussions within your organization, you're putting yourself behind the eight ball. Well, uh, you have to have these conversations. And that changes the, the, the paradigm as how IT is viewed within the organization. Okay, because you're, you're, you're embracing, embracing doesn't mean you're accepting, but you have embraced at least that there's an acknowledgement that there is a movement going on out here. And when your departments go to these conferences and they hear speakers like Shannon talk about stuff like this, and they get all excited, they come back and they hit you, hey, have you heard about such and such and such? And if you're like, well, we, you know, you put up the X sign right away, you know, they're excited about it. And so, Finding the, the delicate point of how to say, well, you know, we, we, we're looking at this. These are some of the things that we need to have in place within our organization before we even think about something like this. Versus just exiting right off the top. Yes, ma'am. With uh, the point say they don't want to spend their own money, they're, they're still using their own personal device to access corporate information. For example, and I'm great to tell myself for the camera, which is a little nervous about that, but um, so here at the School of Government, we don't have any type of policy around bringing our own personal devices, okay? So I brought in my own iPad and I was able to connect it to our email server. somewhere within it. I didn't have any security on it. My son said, oh, Dad, who 
was his email from? And he's opening up all kinds of emails from Shannon. Just like that, you know, I, and I'm an IT person, and I know better. I know better. I mean, I think we're one click away from a Dropbox, you know, fiasco. Splattered on the news from Observer, but but at least you did have you feel a little bit better, right? You can splatter. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Great. How do you feel that uh, a corporate laptop is more secure than, than a corporate iPad? Anybody like break up and say yes? What you say? I'm sorry, I'm Wake County already proved, North County, already proved that you know there are medical records that can leak out from the ambulance when the laptop gets stolen. The VA already proved that. 
that sucker and they upload their stuff to Esri and then bounces it back down and updates our um, GIS database in real time. So if they lose that thing, we have a, we're, we're, we don't have a security issue. The biggest thing is going to be you know, if they start using email on it. There's plenty of ways you can secure the email. And you know, those, these aren't BYOD, these are actually ones that we purchased just like um, um, orange water over there. Um, I'd, I'd rather buy it and, and know that they're, that they're doing it. But we fully intend to, to let them, we're not locking them down, we're trying to lock them down. In fact, the route that we've chosen is to actually um, put the device management as far as applications or anything in the business unit's hands. Um, you know, if, if they want to um, use their credit cards and set up Apple IDs and to, so that they can download apps, yeah, that's it's their device, they pay for it, they can put whatever they want to on there. The stuff that we're responsible for, the data, we know that that's secure, none of that's going to get um, compromised. Um, I mean, how else can we do it? Otherwise, we're, like you said, we're saying no, 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 and we're going to... One quick question. Who owns the app that they bought and put on the corporate iPad? Do you, do you, do you take ownership of that, or does the person that bought the app own the app? The, you know, the person has a corporate issue iPad, they used to run Apple, I mean, they paid the $2.99. They leave the organization, the iPad comes back to me. Do you leave the app on here? Does the organization own it? Does that with, with, with those apps, So even if your device gets wiped, you own that in your iCloud, so to speak. So you can go to any other device and you can download it there. Now, the, obviously, the corporate's going to wipe it. Or so they can leave it on there. But that, those types of apps are a subscription type of apps where you own it in the cloud. And you typically get installed on any device. I haven't seen one yet that's device dependent where you have to buy one for each device. But yeah, that would be, if we haven't had that happen yet, but that's, that's the model that, you know, what, whoever bought it, the, if the department, and again, it's up to the department. We gave DOT the choice. You know, you can have one Apple ID and and have one person, one supervisor or whatever, um, and they do all the downloads. You know, and, and put the things on here to their credit, the department credit card tied to it. Or you can, you know, give it to the crews and go buy a five dollar ice cream card. And you know, the worst they can do is charge five dollars. You know, it's that's not IT's business to. It should not be our business to tell you what you can and can't do with your department. And when we try to do that, we just make ends. Yes. And it is part of this whole negotiation thing. It is a different world for us because we're used to controlling that desktop. Um, but you know, I think we need to step back and it is about presentation and, and how you get to that data. That's information is our first name, not desktop. Email is cached though on there. So if you said it, I sent my settings to this to bring up the grace point. So if we have the Excel spreadsheet and that email is sent back and forth, it's all cached on the device. So even my mobile management software that I might have that I say that I can delete the device remotely if it gets lost and things like that to get rid of that information, I can't because if they don't turn on the Wi-Fi and don't ever connect back, it's out there and it's sitting on that device and it's easily accessible by PIN. Things like that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it, but there are security concerns to that data getting out because it's cached on the device locally. Or if I open it up and I have like docs to go or something like that on my device, then it's stored mm -hmm. in on the device, not in cache, but permanently at that point in time. The, re the reason I asked about the application ownership is because a real world scenario happened with us in, in that we had a recording of potential criminal. school LEA here in North Carolina, they were wrestling with the same um, quandary here, if you will, so to speak. So we had teachers that were buying their own personal apps, and these teachers were leaving going to another school. 
And then the school say, well, these are our apps. And the teacher said, no, these are our apps. We bought these with gift cards that the PTA gave us. Okay, so they're taking the apps with them. So, <coughs> yeah, they're taking apps with them. So, so, so what, what I suggested to them, and, and I'm not, I'm, I'm there as an evaluator, evaluating their one-to-one -one which is very similar to BYOD. What I suggested to them was that they create a school or grade level specific iTunes account so that they can then, you know, then the teachers would then say, we want to buy these different applications and then the school owns them versus the actual individuals owning them. So I have apps on a, a UNC iPad, but the apps belong to me. So if I leave, the apps are going to go with me wherever I decide to go because they're attached to my ID. It's transparent on the device too. So yes. You don't know. I mean, you just need to manage it correctly as far as yeah, who's as far as the licensing piece goes. Because if I log in anywhere, that those apps follow me because it's in the iCloud. So, yes, sir. One of the areas that I was getting concerned with compared to laptops to devices is that most of the device operating systems are geared towards convenience. If the login or the uh, security of the device is you're automatically compromising cloud, VPN, other kinds of, of access off device, but the device becomes a facilitator to some very serious security concerns. And I think that's uh, what, why the attraction of cloud and virtual environments are so attractive, because it gets us away from having to manage devices. It's almost impossible to manage devices. Just that you're measuring, we decided as our, well, I don't call it VI. Accessible strategy because it, it's, it's more for anything rather than just be like it is. Is we use Citrix Zen. Yeah. And anything we do is we package up and make it available, and that creates a nice little area for anything we want outside of our normal internal network. And that's when we do our strategy. That's where it goes. It goes in here and it goes out. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So we, we have we, we we call it more of an overall strategy rather than just a BYOD. And there's this little little Citrix receiver app exactly. that's free to download, and you can click that guy. Log into that virtual desktop, and you can do anything you want. You can access your file on the network and all that sort of thing. And if you're done, nothing's stored here, just like I'm being at home. Yeah. We, we, just, we don't use the VDI piece, we just use the Zen app, where we can package up applications and push it out. Um, we even package up office, we have office packages up. So. Yeah. And I think um, BYOD or this type of strategy gets, gets you away from managing devices and really. Focusing back on the information in the back end systems that are most important to the organization. Yeah, our concern with the whole thing was not so much the DID, BYD itself, it's how do we, as Greg was trying to talk about, you know, with the data piece, how do we secure and control the data and limit the access so we don't have devices all around, whether they're ours or BYODs. Our, my main goal is to protect the data so I don't have to send out state wide mailings or deal with any kind of trash landing. So uh, a lot of this all changing the environment of how uh, we're interacting with our users, right? Um, if you heard Dan talk about you give them the device and, hey, let them go have fun with it. Well, some of your IT really technical folks have a hard time letting go of that whole process, right? You ever, you ever have the, 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 the person on your staff that goes out and so there um, might be a department head or someone requesting a new computer. And then the IT person within your department goes out and says, they don't bring a new computer. They don't, they don't do anything with it. I mean, well, why, why do they need that? That never happens, right? Okay, I, I, that must only happen when I was managing IT. But, but you, you will have that one that will, will suggest that they don't need that type of computer. Well, in this model, we're saying that, hey, if the user is saying that's what they need, we're, we're going to communicate, okay, well, what business needs, so it's a different paradigm than just saying no all the time. I think we, we beat that up quite considerably. All right.
right, so the other frame um, that we want to talk about is this cultural or symbolic frame. Um, in a lot of businesses, IT is considered to be a cost center or a cost to be controlled. Um, and traditionally, they've always tried to stick IT up to finance, right? And in this model, this gives us an opportunity to, to be at the same level or table with the other C-level or executive level um, officers within the organization. It's interesting, there's a conference that's going on in San Francisco that's coming up. Um, it's, it's a consumerization and IT conference. And one of the topics I just found fascinating was that um, one of the topics they're having is the, they, they call it the CDO, the Chief Design Officer, which is this person who is embracing stuff like BYOD and everything else. So they're saying that the, the CDO is the new CIO, which I find is completely fascinating. But it's kind of said something. They're saying that what that statement was saying to me was that IT is not willing to even look at this, so we've got to go hire someone in else to, to look at bringing the technology to our department. And you really start to see this with um, um, like PIOs and CIOs. You can really start to see where these things kind of rub and are, are banging heads and Whichever one has the ear of the manager at the time you know, is the one that gets elevated, unfortunately. But it's very, very interesting dynamic that's happening. So culturally, being able to um, be in a place where we're considered a business partner or a broker is where we really would like to be. The other part of this is this whole thing that Dan is going with employee empowerment, allowing them to be better at their jobs is, is really significant. And then we talked about this also, how do we manage the network? Um, what do we ultimately need to care about? Is it the device or is it the actual information? The information. Uh, politically, um, you know, politics go <coughs> a multitude of different places. Um, but I think politically for us as IT professionals, we need to change this perception of the no, we've said this already, and more to how, let's partner, let's open up our arms, Let's have a kumbaya song and sing together, that sort of thing, okay? And this last thing, this political statement that a lot of us, or some have, not I won't say us, but some have <coughs> politic that BYOD is a money saver. Is that fact or myth? Money shifter. It's a money shifter, exactly. Because the money that you would spend on these devices now have to be spent in your infrastructure. And even personal. So that, that's the political piece, the political part. So as we begin to line our ducks up, it's really corny, right? But I had to go there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So as we, uh, we want to make sure that we have a policy created, that we're getting out in front of this thing, okay, as, as soon as we possibly can. We want to ensure that our infrastructure is, is appropriate. And that's both from a physical and also from a human resource perspective. Also, we talked to kind of on the edges of this, but determining what flavor of BYOD we want to integrate. We've already said that not all BYOD doesn't fit all our organizations. So what flavor of BYOD are we going to go at? Are we just going to narrow down to three devices? Are we going to be the one supporting the device? Are we going to be the one buying the device? What, what flavor? Um, examine your culture. Will your culture allow for an effective integration of BYOD? And I'm talking about within the IT department. Because the IT department will sabotage the BYOD culture more so than the rest of the organization. Okay? We're, we're shifting like that, right? And last but not least, um, well, we haven't really talked a lot about this, but setting up governance structures, uh, helping you to determine how to really get BYOD. My last slide is what's your decision? I'm a GIS student, so I don't think the side of the control is flying to be the most perfect. <laughs> Everything on the <coughs> slide needs to be done so 
to start with the department, or in the case of the school system, they, they chose the wrong school, they chose a high school, but I don't want to start with maybe a middle school, but starting with, with something that's, that you can ramp up easily to, not, not something that's going to just blow you out the water right off the top. So, I guess. Start with high school. Start with high school. I'm in control, I think. Any questions? Any more comments? Great conversation. Said they don't feel like that they should be the one supporting them per se because you know, this wasn't something that was really clear to us. But somebody has to support them. And so here, here, here's the opportunity for IT. I think this is, it's, it's a challenge and it's an opportunity all at the same time. Okay, so if you have a senior level person within the organization saying to you, I, I like using this device, I know you didn't sanction it. I know you didn't sanction it, but I'm getting work done. And, and, and so this is an opportunity for you to be able to partner with them. I think it's an opportunity for the IT department to partner with them and make a difference in a perception change about your organization. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's going to be perception. And if you do not do it, trust me, they're going to find someone else to do it, and then they're going to put this stamp on you like, they can't do the new stuff. Or, or we go back to this cost to be controlled. Well, they're not really doing this, so we don't need, let's move this money over here to the CPT, which we'll take, because they bought us the iPad, and they were willing to try to help us, you know, get this device online. And true story, I'm at Monday Night Football game, call from the boss at like, damn, 8.30 at night, he was at the office doing something, I'm on my phone, the join me thing, so I can see what the hell he's doing. <laughs> That is the shift that IT is starting to, to ha happen. Especially if, if you have, um, let's say, someone who, who gets an iPad and bring it in, and their son or grandson or granddaughter or whatever is their computer wizards, or they at least know how to use the technology, and they're able to actually help them with some things. And, they, they, and the comment you'll get was, will be, well, my grandson or my granddaughter helped me. Yes. 
That's why you have to have your policy out, out front early, even before this stuff comes in. That policy you from those things? It depends on who. questions or comments, you guys have been great. I really enjoyed this. It is a really exciting time to be in technology. I guess you could look at it from both sides of it. But please pray for us as we leave out of here and embark on BYOD. Or, but I think it's a really exciting time. I think IT has a really wonderful opportunity to really impact their organizations. Thank you. Thank you.